Morning, friends. It is seed starting Saturday, and I feel like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz because the wind here is unbelievable. So if something happens, you know that's exactly what the problem was. So welcome, everybody. Um, I am... Got a lot of lot to share with you this morning. We're going to start our sunflowers as usual. I'll do that um, close to the end. I've got some really gorgeous seedlings to actually show you. And I have things to share with you today. And I want to just say there is no April Fools in this today. Um, I'm not an April Fooler and don't appreciate it when I'm April Fools because I'm so gullible. I always fall for it. So you can count on everything I say in today is factual. And um, so I'm just look, I have a list literally because um, I have so many important things I want to share with you guys today. So we are going to do our sunflowers. My first two weeks are already that we started here together. Um, gosh, four five weeks ago, four weeks ago, maybe five weeks ago. Um, already planted out in the garden. And if you look on our live farm cam, um, that's here on YouTube. Um, you can always go in and sometimes the feed goes down, but most often it's up. You can, I think you can barely see them over on the left-hand corner. There's a silage tarp on the rest of the bed that's ready and waiting to receive the, the future sunflowers, like some of these that we're going to start today. I have two trays sitting out on the carport that are protected from the wind, um, that are ready to be almost planted. Bobo will probably plant them this week. And then we're going to just keep on starting them, right? I have a tray in the grow room, and then we're going to start the tray. And that is the Sunflower Freight Train, which if you are a flower farmer and you are not starting, you're not starting sunflowers every single week to have them on just sequence timing, um, you're missing out on a really big opportunity. I don't care who your customer is. We sold them to florists, event designers, supermarkets, farmers markets, and our market bouquets and our bouquet subscriptions. Um, and when you grow the right ones and the right colors at the right size, they're just incredibly useful. So we'll talk. I'll sh we'll do that at the very end here today. Um, and I just have to confess, I counted the seedlings this morning as I was out here a little bit early um, because I recorded a very special podcast this morning um, for Tuesday. And so I got up early and came out here because there's a video to go along with it. So I'm a little bit ahead of the game. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to count the seedlings. Well, y'all, I am just kind of embarrassed to confess that I have over 11,000 seedlings in this building right now. <laughs> The reason they're all inside is because we have gale force winds going on outside. The temperatures are perfect for all these warm season babies to be outside, but they'd be blown into my neighbor's yard if I put them out there. So I'm spending a lot of time juggling seedlings and managing. And um, so I feel your pain. There's a lot of people out there that talk about how they're out of grow light space. Well, people, I've been out of grow light space for a week now. <laughs> And it's um, kind of interesting. So to the announcements, and then I want to show you some babies and I'm going to show you some a few flowers. Um, a reminder, if you have not discovered our phone app, um, you can go to your phone app store and download. It's free. We do a show in there usually twice a week. Um, and there's often products in there that aren't available on our big website and specials. And the special yesterday is why I wanted to tell you this is we've never done it before. We've given a coupon code for 10% off of everything you purchase. If you purchase it by April 2nd, that's tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern time. So that coupon code is good for that free seed shipping. If you just buy seeds, it's free. Now we're giving you 10% off. Um, plus there's a, a lot of other great stuff in there. So check that out, but you have to have the app to be able to go in and shop like that. And if you watch yesterday's show, I also, um, talk about how, if you go into the show, why don't I just show you, if you go into your app and it comes up, these are all the live shows. So this Yes, this was yesterday's. Let's just touch it. And let me show you a shortcut. So it comes up. If you hit this shop all down here at the bottom, 
you can literally scroll through all the things that I talked about. And if you find something, it's like, oh, what is that cool little thing? You can tap it and it goes straight to where I bring up that product and talk about it. Um, totally awesome. I wish our website could do this. It can't. That's why we have this phone app, y'all. It is just totally awesome. So get the app and you can go in and check that out. Remember the coupon code is SPRING, S-P-R-I-N-G, and it's only good until tomorrow morning, only on the app. It's not good on our website. This is just in the app. Um, so check that out and, um, love for you guys, um, to take advantage of that. And so I've got all this big news to tell you. What is the other big news tomorrow, Monday morning, my flower farm and school online course is launching as an on demand course. What does that mean? You no longer have to wait until enrollment opens in October to be able to enroll and you get the class instantly. Um, so watch for that. Um, and you can go to the gardenersworkshop.com and learn more about it. Um, but the course will go live on Monday morning. And as soon as you buy it, boom, the whole course is in your library. And in fact, today, my manuscript is due on my new book that's coming out in February of 2024. But I was given a one week reprieve. So that's why I'm sitting here talking to you. If I'm not here next Saturday, you know why. But I'm going to try my best to be here. Um, and then we're continuing to do photo shoots until June 30th. Um, so we have our, our photography deadline is later. And oh my goodness, y'all, we're doing a really special show this coming week. So on Thursday, April 6th at 7 p.m., trying to be there for more people, y'all. We are doing a live um, kind of special show inside the app, and I am launching a new tool to the Gardener's Workshop. And if you are a flower farmer, you better be there or be square. <laughs> you do not want to miss this. So it's launching a new tool, and I'll be showing how I use it. So see you Thursday and see if you go in and get the app now and set turn on the notifications, you would get a little ding whenever we go live and we would give you a heads up notice to that too. And then finally, before I show you some babies, um, if you want to stay in the know over all this stuff, just sign up for our newsletter. I'm sure Jesse will put the um, link in here in a minute. Um, we send more content than we do sales stuff, y'all. And that's the way to not miss. And the last thing I'm wrapping up with is, guess what? We are having, I am hosting an open farm this year. And it's going to be, mark the calendar. A lot of the details aren't out yet, but a lot of them are. Um, June 24th, um, it's here. I'm in Newport News, Virginia. In the past years, we have had people that come from all over the country is why we start talking about it early on to come to my little urban farm, y'all. I mean, it's just the most flattering thing that has ever happened. Um, but super special. You do not have to. It's free. You do not have to sign up unless um, we have a special event for my students Dave's students and Ellen Frost students. We're having a special before time, before the open farm. So if you're one of our students, Dave, Ellen, or myself, because we'll all be here, um, there is a special time for you. And that is going to be, that's new this year. Totally excited about that. Anyway, so y'all ready to look at some babies, but you need to get on my email newsletter list so you can stay up on all of this stuff. So of those 11,000 seedlings, I brought some over here. I wanted to show you I have different age stuff. So y'all, this is amaranth. This is um, velvet curtains, which is a red upright. And these were started March 20th. And they will, you can see I stole these off of a bigger tray. You can see that they were leaning this way. So I've been rearranging them because I got a light problem going on, right? Because I got so many seedlings. So this is amaranth. Um, it was started March 20th. So that makes it what, 11, 12 days old. Um, this is the small block. This is the large blocker, large blocking tray. And they will grow in this block until I take them to the garden. I will pinch all of my amaranth. Amaranth grows enormous stems and heads that are really cool in your garden, but they aren't very useful in bouquets. So you got to pinch amaranth. Um, and then look at these marigolds. These were started on the same day. These are March 20th. So these are, what did I just say? 12 days old. 
Look how beautiful these are, y'all. These are the sturdiest little seedlings. I could just sit here for the rest of the show and talk to y'all and rub these seedlings. That's You don't want to do that. Like, I can't really do that to those amaranth. They aren't sturdy enough. Um, that just really helps them build resistance and strong little stems. Sometimes when I'm watering, if the height of the light is right, I'll do that to my seedlings. Um, but again, you don't want to do that too soon because you'll wipe them out. You'll just kill them. Um, but these are marigolds. I'll pinch 50% of them because I want the earliest blooms on the unpinched ones and I want the earliest branching on the pinched ones. So I get the better of both worlds, right? Um, and you all do know that what is what is what makes the fragrance for, for marigolds is not the flower, it's the foliage. So if you want to use marigolds because they're so long lasting and like supermarket bouquets, but you don't want to you don't want to put those in there with with foliage. We have found people don't like this. more people don't like the fragrance than do. So we strip them because the flowers are big and beautiful. They come in such awesome colors. White swan, y'all. Oh, my gosh. I have a tray just like this of white swan. And the freight, the first off, the foliage has little to no fragrance and they're buttercream color. Totally and completely awesome. So this is um, our green trays. You will not find this tray on the app. You have to find this tray over on the big website. There are just some things we can't sell on the app because of shipping problems. Um, so you'll find these trays. We actually have more of these trays on the way from England. It's where they come from. Um, and that's a hundred of the three quarter inch blocks. I should be moving these out of my way. All right, y'all. One of the tips I shared, um, I shared several tips yesterday on making soil in the on the show. Um, and one of them was we don't sell these. These are my measuring devices that I use for mixing soil. I have a dry measuring device and I have a wet one. And when I use this, when I am making soil, mixing it, it's like um however many scoops of compost to however many scoops of peat moss. It's like one of these to four peat moss. And then when I go to do water, it's one of these, it's the equal amount. So having equal measures makes it super easy. So when I'm actually scooping from my blocking mix, it's already mixed. It's three of these to one of these. And I don't have to guess. I don't have to sit there and mix and think, I wonder if it's going to be the right consistency. Nine out of 10 times, it's perfect. Um, so, you I mean, you can get these at any kitchen place. I like measuring devices that are attached, the handle at the top and the bottom so they don't break. I have broke so many handles off, y'all. Um, but these are the best. These are eight cup um, measurers and just totally love them. So having a dry one and a wet one, really, really just helps me to be speedy. That's what I'm all about, right? Oh, look at this. Sprouting tomatoes. Look at these little babies. These are sun golds and you can see, right? These are just, just getting ready to sprout. These were born, let's see, what does that say? 327. So these are like three or four days old. Um, but these will be bumped up. We will probably be bumping these up together to the two inch blocker probably in about two weeks from now, maybe. Um, it's easier to get better and quicker germination in the smaller block. Doesn't take up as much space um, and totally love it. I do have a tray of 60 big beasts in there that who needs 60 big beasts? Not me, but we have them. Why? Because I can. Isn't that crazy? And then here is the regular small tray. This is Celosia. And um, again, you can just really rub them. Um, and they, again, will grow in this tray until they go out to the garden. I want to show you all roots. Look at those beautiful little roots. These were started on March 19th. Is that right? No. March 9th. Sorry, y'all. There you go. Um, and anyway, I have some flowers here, too. I want to show you right quick since we... Um, I have our seeds all set up, ready to roll. I was trying to save time for our sunflowers. Um, so I was showing some flowers yesterday on the show. And look at these. My Iceland poppies are blooming their heads off. Aren't they beautiful? Um, and these were, of course, when the photographer was here Wednesday, photo shooting for the book. Do you think I had this many? No, I had five. Dead gummit. So 
These are the Iceland poppies. These were planted in the fall. It's too late to plant them now. You direct sow them out in the garden. I mean, look at this. They're so papery and so delicate looking. Really, really beautiful. And I also want to share, this is my eucalyptus um, parvula gum, which I am in love with. It's got a small leaf. I actually wintered this over outdoors in my garden um, here in zone 8A, 7B, with a double lightweight row cover and deep mulch like Dave Dowling recommends. And it is not only alive, there are actually new sprouts already on this. I can't wait for this year's production. Um, so this is really, really beautiful. Um, and so one last, and then I'll be done. This may, hopefully will be helpful to you guys. Let's look at the stage to harvest for, um, and you, anybody that watched our show yesterday, look how much these have opened since yesterday. This is the stage you harvest bachelor buttons, y'all, like this. These were all harvested like that. When they open inside out of the drying wind and the hot sun, they are more vivid and they just last longer. Um, and so these, we have so many different bachelor button mixes in different colors. This is one mix. There's a pink mix. Um, there's a blue mix. I think this one's called romantic, uh, romance mix, maybe. Anyway, so this is how you want to cut them when they look like this. They will quickly open indoors in the garden. So if you are not um, starting weekly sunflowers, this is my advice to you now. I'll to at least turn this the right way, right? Um, is that you need to bring them on board. If you're a home gardener, I should have brought, I have some sunflowers growing in two inch blocks. If you're a home gardener, you probably don't want to do it in a big tray like I'm getting ready to do it, but you can do it in the two inch soil blocks, which makes four blocks at a time. I would do like eight a week. That way, if you stick, so the whole concept of starting sunflowers each week is this. If you start, let me push my computer back. I don't want to knock something off. Um, if you bring, if you start the same at least the same variety each week. And then you can, you can pretty much switch the colors up, but I like to start at least some of the same color of the same variety every single week, because it's all about keeping your timing, right? And if you start the same sunflowers in the same color each week, you're going to have sunflowers to cut every single week. If you, and I am typically um, pretty much a pro cut seed starter, for sunflowers, Pro Cut is a family of sunflower seeds that has over 14 colors. And so the colors can vary by several days, which might not be as important to you as a home gardener, but as a flower farmer, if you do a different color all one week, and then on that week's bloom, they come four days late. And that four days late is after you make your supermarket bouquets for that week, you will be kicking yourself. So that's why y'all my hair. The wind is um, just kind of had its way with me this morning. Um, that's why it is key. And so now that we are starting seeds today on April 1st, and there are typically 60 days, 55 to 60 days from seed to bloom, I'm thinking, okay, we're talking like June 1st is when these will be blooming. It's time for me to introduce into what I've been starting each week, the classic sunflower that most people recognize and that is the brown disc with the orange petals and my choice is to grow our um, tgw pro cut bouquet mix we actually make that mix in-house and it's a mix of the four orange pro cuts the difference in the four oranges is this there's pro cut orange which is just a regular classic single petaled brown disc sunflowers and it displays like this the hip face is forward then there's horizon which is my new favorite in the oranges and it looks just like the orange yet the blooms don't always go directly up but they're more upward facing that means when you're making bouquets or an arrangement and you have that hole on the top this is the one that goes in there those are pretty much the same color. Then there's orange XL, which is a little bit deeper orange when you put it next to those. Um, and you can, um, it just is a nice shade difference, right? And then I'll have brilliance 
in that mix. And that is the orange with a yellow halo around the disc. So bouquet mix is my go-to, as long as I have the seed here, every week I will be starting that one. So I know that I will be having sunflowers every single week to bloom. But because of, you know, I'm doing things a little different now, I'm doing it for our weekly show to show the harvest. Um, and um, also for imaging, we'll be also starting two other sunflowers. And this week, and they're almost all pro cuts. This week, we'll also be starting the pro cut gold light and the pro cut white light. Y'all, the white light, white, it's got white creamy ivory petals and a gold center with a chartreuse in the middle. It goes with everything. And I'll drop that one off in a couple of weeks because our pest pressure gets so bad in the middle of summer, cucumber beetles and grasshoppers that they just pulverize that one. So I stop it and I'll restart it again later in the season as we move into fall. So I have already uh, made my tape. I use masking tape and our garden marker to make the IDs to go on the tray and the tray that I'm using, let's see here if I can get you tilted down. This is my 128 plug tray and it is full of just any standard potting mix that is actually um, mixed 50% with compost. That just makes the most out of your, makes your potting mix. This potting soil is expensive y'all, especially when you use it at enormous amounts like we do around here. Um, and so compost mixing 50-50 with compost not only helps with that, but it makes your soil no longer sterile and has some living stuff in it, right? So I have made my IDs and I'm just sitting here looking. I really would love to put this. Oh, here we go. I want to lift this tray up, y'all, since I'm only doing one tray. Oh, and by the way, our corn last week that we started in the trays, just like this, has all sprouted and it is outdoors um, because it's harbored from the wind. Anyway, last week, you know, I had three, I should turn that over. Wait a minute, y'all. Try not to cut the computer off by touching the wrong thing. I have spilt dirt all over this top. Suzanne kills me just about every week for doing all this. All right, now we got it up here. So, 128 plug trays with a 50-50 mix of pot, any potting soil and compost. We buy bagged compost. And then I'm just going to use masking tape. And I've written today's date with the different ones that I'm going to be starting. Um, because especially if you change it up every week, it is super helpful to actually know what you're you know, planting so you can group them together. Um, and we do not mark them in the garden. There's just... That is one thing that I have not mastered yet, y'all, after all these years of how to mark what we've planted in the garden um, that doesn't interfere with row covers when needed, that the dog doesn't carry off with any wooden stake he does, no matter how big it is. Um, all right, so I've put my name tags on here. And now what are we starting with? White light. All right, so we've got our seed and I'm just going to dump into my hand the seeds and white light is a black oil sunflower seed and I'm just going to simply drop one seed on the surface of each cell and we'll complete the process after we get them all planted here and I don't find that it's necessary to wet my trays before I plant you know, y'all, the whole bottom line for me as a commercial, as a business person, is to do everything as efficiently, as quickly, and to remove any unnecessary stamps, I mean steps, because guess what? Time is money. And if you don't already know that and you're going into business, you're going to soon learn that, that everything comes down to how much every added step takes more time and more time means it costs you more. Um, you know, that I'm not just talking about employees. My time is super valuable. Why? Because I can benefit my business doing a whole lot of other things that are much more beneficial to our business than me doing this, right? 
um, if I was sitting here doing this without you. But by making as few steps as possible, I drop these trays into the big tub that is mixed with 50% potting soil and 50% compost. I drop the tray down in there and just one more. Oh, I got to do one more row, don't I? Talking definitely gets me off my game, y'all. Um, drop the tray into that big tub that sits out on my carport. Fill it quickly and easily with the soil. Scrape off all the excess because I don't want to waste. And I, because I was fighting the wind this morning, I didn't clean the top quite as much as I usually do. You do not want soil running off onto the floor when you actually go to water these. That is wasted money. You're washing money away, right? Um, so, wait a minute, let me get these. So, this is the bouquet mix, and I just did it backwards, y'all. Wait a minute, let me change my tape. Wondered why when I opened this up, there's two colored sunflowers in here. That was gold light that's striped in bouquet mix, which is the one I'm doing the lion's share of here. Because some of them are black oil and some of them are the striped, I thought, hmm, there's a problem. All right, so I'm still just dropping one on the top of each. Um, but I do not find it necessary to wet the soil before because that's just one more stop. I mean, think how long it takes a train to get from point A to point B because it's stopping every 30 minutes to put people on and put people off. It's the same thing. As much non-stopping as you have to do in all the jobs that you do for flower farming. I mean, that's one of the things that I so enjoy hearing from students because we talk about in school, you know, doing, what are you doing during the day? What is, what are, what, what are you doing, wasting your time doing? And sometimes you figure out that many of those things you are spending a lot of time doing aren't even necessary when you're a flower farmer. You're no longer a gardener, right? All right, so we have placed the seeds on the top of the surface, and now I'm just going to take my fingers and push that seed about halfway down into that cell. Now, sunflower seeds sprout best when they are in darkness and are covered with soil. And if you looked into the cell right now, you might say, oh gosh, I can still see the seed. I better add some extra soil. Not necessary, y'all. When you water this tray in with a watering can or a hose with a sprinkler attachment on both of them, it's going to wash down all of the soil that's on the wall of these cell, pat, cell trays and it's going to cover it and you don't have to worry about that. Um, I watch how long all these extra te steps take. Um, and it's just not necessary. There's just, it's just not necessary. Um, and again, if you're a home gardener, you can take as many steps as you would like. But the minute you start doing this as a business, this is why people don't make money. I mean, they just don't realize there's a pen, there's a hundred pennies in every dollar. We all get the same hundred pennies and it's what you do with that and time management and time ta tasking, doing your tasks timely and removing those that really do not make a difference. All right. So now what's going to happen is I'll take these into my grow room, this tray, put it on the ground in there. I have a floor drain and I will use a watering can with a sprinkler head and water this in completely once you're done, I would suggest, once you are done watering, I would um, kind of check one of the cells to see just how well did you water, right? Because sometimes it's not as thoroughly wet as you might think it is. Then I'm going to pop this cell tray up onto a seedling heat mat. And friends, this is why. You can get sunflowers, um, you can get most seeds to, to pop without a heat mat sometimes, but those are not the ones that have the robust, healthy, strong roots 
and stem attached to them. I want my tray to be ready to be planted in the garden when it's two and a half to three weeks old. And we do it when we pull the stem and the whole cell comes out. The cell is engulfed with beautiful, beautiful roots. And you want that to happen quickly and get it out to the garden. We try not to leave sunflowers in the tray more than three weeks. I have certainly done it and I've planted them and I've gotten sunflowers, but they aren't the greatest. Um, they may take longer. They may fall victim to disease um, or just having stunted problems, right? So water it in, pop it onto your seedling heat mat or germination chamber if you have it. Um, and we will take them down and water them every single morning. Normally within 48 hours, about 50% of them are showing their necks. And that is when we take them off the heat and put them under grow lights, or you can put them outside if the weather is conducive. Now, as we know, because we did all those early bird sunflowers together, right? We know that sunflowers will tolerate the cool, but they will not do much growing if it's too cool and they aren't protected. So if it's not warm enough where you are, then you probably still might want to leave them indoors under the grow light where the temperature is higher or give them some protection with a row cover. Now, the rest of the story is this. Once they're two and a half to three weeks old, we plant our sunflowers into open beds with no Bio 360 or mulch. This, you think about this, the sunflower, these sunflowers that we're talking about growing go from seed to bloom in about 55 to 60 days. When you plant them, they're already 20 days old. That's like a third of their life. Why we find it not necessary to waste the energy and the labor and the resources providing weed prevention in that situation. So we plant into open beds that have had the organic dry fertilizer into the bed according to directions. You can learn more about that on our website if you're interested. Um, we prepare the bed and then we plant into an open bed with no Roke, no bio 360 and no irrigation. And here's why. Where we are here, we get 52 inches of rain a year. We get very frequent rain. It's rained twice this week. So we just don't find with sunflowers with their short um, crop time that they need it. So we plant the plants into that bed and we hand water with a wand on a hose and every plant gets a good deep drink that gets them off to a great start. So we plant five rows into a 30 inch wide bed, and then we plant them six inches apart in the row. And that gives us the perfect size sunflower because you control the size of a sunflower head on a single stem sunflower by the spacing that you give it. If you planted these very same sunflowers 12 inches apart in all direction, they get this, well, this big but you plant them closer together. This is the size sunflower that you want to grow as a commercial grower for bouquets, for commercial customers. And I will tell you that your florist and commercial people sometimes won't even recognize them as sunflowers because of the size and of the cool colors. Um, it is such a fun such a fun crop. They're long lasting. And, you know, Dave Dowling and I, talked about um, this oftentimes, especially when he and I were doing lots of lives together, that people ask us all the time, what else can I grow to, you know, to really bump up my business? If you aren't succession planting sunflowers every single week, when we were in high production for eight years, I planted 1,200. I planted 10 of these trays every week, every week. And I'll let you do the math. A hundred and 28 trays times 10 trays each week for 26 weeks times $1.25 is what we got wholesale back then. It's more than that now. And that's what bought me a John Deere $31,000 tractor in one year, plus the implements and paid for it. Y'all, sunflowers are a cash cow cover, a cover not cover crop, crop. And you just have to learn how to grow them, how to grow them properly, how to grow them consistently, and then to let your customer, get your customers to know that you are the go-to person um, for the sunflowers. Because I'll tell you, um, so I'll go down this rabbit hole and I'll look at a couple questions. Um, 
So when I first learned about this from Vicki Stanback's farm in Oklahoma, gosh, I'm going to guess 15 years ago, first 10 years, I just spot spotly planted sunflowers. I always sold out at the farmer's market, but it never occurred to me to plant them every week. It just never came together, y'all, because you're doing so much, right? So at Vicki's farm, we were, I was there for a conference with the ASCFG and she talked about this weekly sunflower planting. And that's where I also learned about the big calendar. And I learned about those sunflowers and just could not believe it. I came home and started doing it. But what I soon learned was, I mean, you know, of course, I had a big commercial following. I had commercial customers every week, florist. <clears throat> and they were like, y'all, I'm losing my voice. It's this potty mix. <clears throat> that they said, oh, we get sunflowers from the wholesaler and, you know, we get a really great price and we have a standing order. That means that they show up every single week. So what I started doing, I mean, I had big standing orders every week. Once my sunflower started coming in, I put like five bunches. Back then, I also want to say all I grew was 1,200 pro cut oranges every week. No other colors. It's not necessary. That was the one that everybody recognized as a sunflower. It's a confusion nightmare when you have different colors, when you're growing the volume that we were growing back then. So pro cut orange every single week. So I would put five bunches. A bunch had 10 stems every week in their orders free, free samples. And it took about probably four to six weeks of them really of the right person at the business Taking notice, A, my sunflower petals were not shriveled up and dehydrated like the shipped in ones. They were gorgeous. And guess what else? They lasted longer. And guess what? In most often the case, my price was pretty competitive with what they were already paying the wholesaler. So after that, I had them hook, line, and sinker. I had three big standing orders every week, and each one of them would take 10 to 20 bunches of sunflowers a week because when they're this big, they can use them in all their work. And, you know, while I'm on a tangent here, friends, um, I will say that my focus, I soon learned after I started flower farming, of course, you know, I started 25 years ago. This is my 25th year. Back then, we didn't have nearly hardly any information, much less what we have today. I had to kind of figure it out. But what I soon figured out was that I wanted to sell the flowers that my commercial customers used every single day of their business life. I could have cared less about special events. I didn't want to hear about wedding colors. I didn't want to hear about swatches because to actually grow for those, I mean, if you're going to do that, that needs to be all your customers because timing of crops is very difficult. Um, and, I wanted to sell the flowers that my florist used every single day in, um, in funeral work, which is big business, in I'm sorry bouquets, you know, anniversaries, all of that stuff. The flowers that the flower shops were doing every single day, I wanted my flowers to be a part of that. And sunflowers that size are huge because most often the sunflowers they get in from wholesalers have really thick stems and the heads are bigger. I'm telling you all, sunflowers are the ticket. Um, Dave and I, we maybe we ought to do another live here soon talking about that. If you are not doing that, that's where you need to focus. And you need to focus on one variety and one color every single week. And if you want to vary other stuff, you can, but I'm telling you, the same color will sell every single week. All right, friends. Sounds like the weather's kind of going crazy. My weather app is going a little nuts. Let me get rid of this. Where can I put it? Y'all look at this. I have to move this to get through. Serenthi. Oh my gosh. This stuff is gorgeous. A new cool flower. It's not new. It's new for me talking about it as a cool flower. And it is super winter hardy. All right. Now, let's pull this a little closer. And let's see, Jesse has pulled out some questions for me. Paula, 
When can I plant the sunflower seeds I got from you as a cover crop? Zone eight. What a great question. And, you know, Paula, I was going through um, pictures, images. I mean, I literally have 11,000. 11,000 seems to be a number for me today. I literally, I think it's, let's look. I have on my phone right now, I'm sorry, 10,940 images. Right there it is. Anyway, I was going through images yesterday and I came across my field of the sunflower cover crop blooming. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful. I can't, I'd kind of forgotten about it, frankly. So it's a warm season tender annual, right? And so we don't want to do that early at all because the whole secret to growing great cover crops is to plant the seed when you know it's the perfect conditions and rain is on the way because you, if you work up the area that you're going to plant the cover crop, immediately when you do that, guess what starts growing? The weed seedlings. Well, you want to get your sunflower or your cover crop seed in, and you want them to get busy growing immediately germinating, just like the weed seeds are. And the weed seeds, because there's a hundred different ones in your soil, probably, just like there are in mine, one of them, those are the perfect conditions and they will quickly start growing. And if your cover crop doesn't start growing immediately also, you're going to have, it's going to overtake your cover crop. So with that said, I would say that I would be planting my cover crop probably two to three weeks after my last expected frost date. You want to give the soil time to warm up. I mean, if you have a soil thermometer, you know, 65 degrees at least, and even later is better. You know what I mean? If you're not in a big hurry, the longer you wait, the quicker they will germinate because it's warmer outside. And be sure you cover the seed. If you're doing a big area, we run over the area with our tractor tiller just really shallowly because the seeds need to be covered. If you're doing it by hand, run a rake over it just to cover it some. Um, and oh my goodness, I'm excited now because we're planting corn. You know, the corn we started last week, we're going to plant that in the back back here. And then that's what I want to plant in front of that. So we'll have the tall green corn foliage with that beautiful sunflowers. Oh my gosh, it was so beautiful last year. So good luck, Paula. Oh, good morning, Wanda. Six above this morning. So Wanda is one of our Alaskan um, peony growers. And she's also, um, I've come to know her because she's one of my students. She's been in all of our courses, actually. And Wanda is a was a teacher herself, and she grows peonies in Alaska. Um, and it is six above. Oh, Wanda, I can't wait till you get warm. All right, so Pat asks, what temperature do you keep your grow room? Well, that's a great question, Pat. So it depends on what time of year it is and what I'm growing. So right now, we have moved from the cool flowers. There's no more cool season hardy annuals in my grow room. It's all warm. So I'm starting to keep the door shut and the sun is shining. So our grow room gets between at the very lowest 75, but 80 to 90 degrees in there is what I am really looking for. And that drives our seedlings to really vegetative growth. Um, so I want to say this, that, um, I got a question a couple weeks ago and it made me think of that question when I saw this. So my azuratum, which is a warm season tender annual, um, had kind of, because it's not in the book, um, not included in the book, um, it's kind of become a second class citizen around here, right? So it got bumped down onto a bottom shelf in the grow room. And I can't tell you the temperature difference between the lower shelves in my grow room and the top shelves is significant. Um, if you need something to grow and you want it to be warmer, definitely put it at the top. So I looked at that azuratum and I thought, oh my gosh, you're like two weeks old. Why are you so tiny? You know, it's like, like, why are you not happy is what I was talking to it. Well, I just simply moved it from the bottom to the top, which is five shelves above, and it popped overnight. It's all about the heat. And yesterday, yesterday Lane and I recorded a seed talk um, and we were talking about different, um, I forget what the name of the episode is. Oh, growing stuff on your blocks. And she was talking about how, because she grows in a cooler air temperature than what she knows 
plants really need, how she uses her heat mat with a cookie cooling rack under her grow lights because she grows in like 55 to 60 degrees. And we know that does not grow vegetation, right? But she has found that her heat mat really helps that and helps to grow stuff. Um, so heat really makes a difference. So at this time of the year, a minimum of 75, but it often goes up to 90 in there because it's southeast facing. There's a lot of windows, plus the grow lights are on, and plus there's heat mats going in that grow room. So Francis asked, do you start your lettuce seeds and soil blocks? Let me get rid of, what is this little block? Let's get rid of this. How many seeds do you put in each block? That's another great question, Francis. And I do. I actually sprout my leaf lettuce, radishes, and carrots, all notoriously direct sown out in the garden. I start them all in the three-quarter inch block. I put one seed per block. And as soon as they sprout, because you can handle, let's just, let's just do a little test here. Here is one of those tomatoes that is sprouting. Let me hold it up there. Can y'all see that? You can see the little neck there. So if that was a carrot or a radish, I'd let a lettuce get a little bit bigger. I can pick it up and go plant it out in my garden so I can space them perfectly. I don't have to over sow and then go back and thin. Um, and I put, I, I generally accept a few exceptions when I point them out to you first whole bunch of different reasons. Occasionally, I'll put more than one seed. Um, but when I am sprouting leaf lettuce, um, and I just harvested our leaf lettuce yesterday and showed it in the show over in the phone app, I love growing lettuce, radishes, and carrots in really big containers. You know what the containers are? They were containers that our 15-gallon trees came in. So they're 15-gallon containers, which would be an expensive container, but I got it free with trees. So I'll start one leaf, one lettuce container, and then two or three weeks later, start again. And then, because when I harvest, I harvest the entire container at one time. And because it'll last in the refrigerator two to three weeks, so I do a clean cut, it will regrow. And then we'll eat that for two or three weeks. And when we need lettuce, guess what? The next container is in. And this one is regrowing during that time. And really, you can get away with two or three containers. And I mean, you can do that with radishes. And because I have trouble growing carrots here because of voles, um, these containers are also really deep. And so I have some carrots going out there. And it'll be really interesting to see the experiment. But that's kind of how I do that. So Roebuck Mountain Farm, can you recommend a good sunscreen? You know, I do not, I do not have one to recommend because what I typically do, I mean, I use sunscreen in my face moisturizer, which is olive ole is I'm pretty basic y'all. Uh, my mother was a olive ole user. Isn't it funny how we use what our mama does? And my mother, when she passed away at 80, she was 83, um, she went in for surgery like five years before she passed away. And this, this is a true story, y'all. She came, she had hand surgery and the nurse came out and we were sitting in the waiting room, right? And we heard, overheard this in the hallway and she said, I'm pretty sure this is the wrong record. This record says this lady is like 78 years old and I'm telling you, she looks like not a day over 60. And it was because of course she A, dyed her hair, right? But my mother had great skin and I have great skin. So I use olive ole and I use the one that has sunscreen in it. Um, and we oftentimes wear long sleeve shirts around here, lightweight cotton. Um, my mom used to always get them for us at the thrift store. Men's long sleeve dress shirts, really light cotton ones um, that we'll use. But I will confess that I do not put sunscreen on my arms and I probably should. So sorry, I cannot help you. So Wanda is asking, what are your day and nighttime temperatures when you put out your first succession of sunflowers? All right, so Wanda's in Alaska, right? So she's trying to figure out when can she start putting sunflowers out. So Wanda, if that's assuming that we, you know, hoop and cover when we put them out, right? Um, but the nighttime temperatures are 30s and 40s with the days going up into the 50s. Um, and then, of course, the row covers will kind of like help warm that up. So thank you guys for those great questions. So friends, I do have um, 
somewhere to be at 12 o'clock. And so thank you so much for joining me today. And remember that there's that 10% coupon that you can use over in the app. It's not good on the website. It's just in the app. Get the app over on your phone app store. Um, just search Gardener's Workshop. There's a great live video there. You can watch previous shows, but yesterday's shows, remember I showed you at the beginning of this, how you can go right to something that you want to do. Mark your calendar. June 24th is our open farm. Um, and that's going to be a lot of fun. And remember this Thursday, April 6th, inside the app, I am launching a new um, tool that we're using and you do not want to miss it, friends. This has been a long time coming. Um, so that is Thursday, all, um, April 6th at 7 p.m. Um, and I just can't wait. We'll be sharing. My course goes live on Monday. As soon as we get this course out there and all established, then we'll start talking about my book and the name and start telling you a little bit more about it. Um, I'm super stoked with it. And um really a lot of fun and exciting. As you're coming to the end of these projects, it's always exciting. Um, so thank you guys. Remember to give me a like and a subscription to here on YouTube. If you're on Facebook, please like and share with groups that you think might be interested that somebody might be wanting to join us on Saturday mornings. All right, friends, until we meet again. Thank you, Jesse, for helping us. Till we meet again, friends. Ciao.